Hello, welcome to the case study on enhanced oil recovery in the EOFERT. So in this case study, we'll be talking about the validation of a huff and puff simulation forecast with field performance data. <clears throat> So the Eagle First Shale has been a successful unconventional play, producing up to 1.34 million barrels a day as of June 2019. Although there is an overall incremental production increase with new wells drilled and completed, the average production from each well significantly drops within the first two years of the well's life. And the recent trend indicates that the increased number of fracture stages per well and perforation clusters per stage also contribute to the fall of production rates um, after the high initial rates that we see. So the goal of this project was to match the current production from the wells to first characterize the reservoir and then test EOR processes to optimize oil recovery since the natural depletion rates re declined so quickly. So in this case, the planar fracture approach was used to match the historical data and then test the EOR scenarios. Okay, so this is the base model. So it's a compositional single porosity model with homogeneous porosity and permeability. Uh, this model has uneven half length and FCD or the conductivity for the fractures. And an element of symmetry approach was used where only one stage per well was modeled and the results for each well were scaled up to 16 stages per well. And this is a very common approach that's used. Um, so we'll only model uh, one or few of the stages uh, to have the runtime be extremely low and then scale up the results for the full well model, which will allow us to complete studies very quickly and get extremely fast results. The hydraulic fractures are modeled using our logarithmically spaced locally refined grid blocks to capture the correct transient response from the matrix to the fracture. And on the right side of the table, you can see the properties of the reservoir um, that were used in this specific case. So this is the top view of the base model. You can see there's three wells with unsymmetrical um, half lengths. Um, and we use this first to get a good history match because uh, we need to calibrate the model. So this slide talks about the model calibration. So the primary production from the three wells in the Eagleford were history matched using CMOS. The hydraulic fracture geometry, conductivity, and compaction of the hydraulic fractures, as well as the matrix permeability and relative permeability were the tuning parameters. And the plot here shows the gradual decrease in the history match error of the 2000 simulation runs. And this is the best case scenario. You can see it started at about 40% or above 40%. The best case has an error of maybe around 6%. So it's a pretty significant reduction in the error. These slides just show the actual best history match case for the three wells. So this is the P2 well. As you can see, the history match um, is relatively good. Um, this is the P3 well. Um, and then lastly, we have the P4 well. And again, as I said um, earlier, we have a good history match uh, for these three wells, which will allow us to move into the forecast portion um, of this simulation study. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the huff and puff forecast. So in this case, the produced gas was chosen as the injection fluid over the traditional CO2 injection, which has been the recent tra trend of gas huff and puff EOR in the Ecofern. There's a few reasons for this. Uh, first of all, the field gas is readily available in high volumes in this field, whereas CO2 would have been an expensive option to source. And then secondly, the field gas is considered to be more economically viable option uh, for a huff and puff EOR pilot. So the injection gas composition examined consisted primarily of varying compositions of methane to hexane. The forecasting starts on January 1st, 2018. And there was two different sensitivities we modeled. First one was the injection pressure, the bottom hole injection pressure, and the next one was the cycle time. So first of all, with the injection pressure, uh, an economically viable and practical bottom hole pressure was set to 4,500 PSI, along with a maximum injection volume of 300,000 feet cube per gas of gas per stage. And you can see here, the 4,500 BHP case gives us the best um, oil recovery. Um, after a few stages of a few cycles of the huff and puff. And the reason for this is because this is above the miscibility pressure. Um, so once we start injecting above the miscibility pressure, we get the best impact um, on the oil production. So the next thing we'll talk about is the cycle time optimization. Um, first of all, the optimization of the injection cycle times is considered a key factor in determining the success of the huff and puff project, as it can, it can enhance the net utilization per cycle to drive the economic efficiency. So we tested four scenarios with different injection production cycle times, and we analyzed the effect of the cycle time and the distribution on the inc incremental production. So the first scenario, we have a total of 15 days of a cycle, 
In, in this one, we have eight days of injection, seven days of production. The second one has a 35 day cycle time where 15 days of production, 20 days of, 15 days of injection, 20 days of production. The third cycle is 60 days where you have 30 days of injection and 30 days of production. And the last one is 90 where you have 45 days of injection and 45 days of production. And we're injecting at or above the first contact miscibility pressure, which of course will increase the process efficiency and the uplift. So this is uh, the, the results from the sensitivity analysis. And what it shows is the cycle time of 90 days with a split of 50-50 between the injection and production yields the most oil production. And this is 27% more than the non-EOR case, which is the natural depletion of the wells at a constant bottom hole flowing pressure following uh, the historical production. So we have a huge impact or a huge increase in the oil recovery we could see with this huff and puff forecast. So here are some conclusions from this case study. Um, first of all, the simulation model was history matched to the primary production period, and this was used to determine the uncertain parameters of the reservoir, such as the matrix permeability, porosity, saturations, relative permeability, and of course of the hydraulic factors, so properties such as the geometry and the conductivity. The calibrated model was used for uh, all the uh, different studies to be described, and the model was the guiding link for designing a suitable surveillance plan. And the learnings of the simulation study were actually applied to the field scale pilot design and the field results showed an excellent match which were within 10% of the simulation predicted EOR recovery results. Again, validating all the work that had been done and proving um, the effectiveness of using simulation prior to applying it in the field because we were able to do an optimization on different parameters that gave us results that were very close to what we saw in real life. Thank you for watching this case study.